you know, how AI connects to sustainability and maybe uh, add uh, a little bit more dimensions into uh, how I see, you know, the connection between AI and the sustainability, right? So typically, I think AI could be viewed as uh, uh, influencers, you know, in sustainability in at least three, the three following ways. The first, obviously, is that AI is a tool. It is a tool for decision making and hopefully for better decision making. And in our business of uh, sustainability, energy, for example, agriculture, you know, where you plant and how do you plant and how do you organize logistics for ports and so forth. When you use AI, you hope that it can make a better decision than human being because the AI tool are trained on larger amount of data, you know, are doing quick and hopefully powerful mathematical calculation you know, in a way that is uh, beyond what human being is achieved. It's just like you play with a Go player. Nowadays, you go to a, uh, uh, an AI player you know, instead of a, a human player if you really want to win the game. So that's actually an important dimension we shouldn't forget. AI is a tool that can be deployed in many you know, uh, sectors to hopefully you know, find the best way to reduce you know, greenhouse emission to do better planning, to reduce cost, and also to maybe uh, increase efficiency. That itself is already a big addition, you know, into the contain containment, you know, of uh, pollutions, of, uh, you know, extending sustainability. And then the second area, as uh, both Phil and Daniela also mentioned, is that AI itself is a consumer of resource. Therefore, it automatically, you know, uh, connects to, you know, how to, uh, make the AI practice itself more sustainable. Because uh, as mentioned earlier, training larger AI models these days is a very trendy thing to do. But uh, what is not uh, really highlighted is the energy footprint and also many other uh, consumptions, including people you know, and manpower and logistics and other uh, resources that are consumed by AI. I think there are a lot of researches uh, now already uh, becoming aware of uh, this challenge and opportunity. And there are, you know, areas uh, where people can work on algorithms uh, and the theories and the models to make, for example, uh, the larger AI model uh, smaller and uh, smarter, more efficient, so that uh, in achieving the same goal or maybe a better goal, you uh, make use of less computational power. But also, you know, uh, it's actually quite interesting to relook, you know, some of the old fields in computer science, such as operating system, programming language, and these areas actually were originally, you know, uh, built to actually help people, you know, to build, you know, a better computing infrastructure, you know, better language, and also turn the code more efficiently. I think this may be another, you know, an opportunity we may want to explore here at MBZUI or you know, uh, in some of the you know, new programs that we are building, you know, to really, you know, open up, you know, new opportunities for established and mature fields, you know, for this uh, uh, potentially uh, new potential to be unlocked. But another dimension I do want to emphasize, you know, which I found to be very strongly these days, is uh, uh, the impact of AI on human society and uh, on human civilization. Because we human beings need to also be sustainable, right? For example, we need to be healthy, we need to live long enough to get the work done. And also the society need to have enough creativity and brain power to further you know, the science, to further the curiosity, and also to make you know, new innovations, and also to solve future problems. And uh, I think there is a challenge here. For example, with the deployments of uh, tools like ChatGPT, you can use it in very different ways. You could, for example, use it as a, uh, a tool to uh, get your work done better and also allowing you to uh, make more efficient use of your time to do something that is not doable by like, uh, these AI tools. But on the other hand, you could also use it, uh, you can rely on it to, get, uh, to do your work and retire yourself from your work, and then become, you know, very soon, maybe uh, obsolete, you know, for the very occupation that you are occupying. 
right? So that's actually, in my opinion, uh, could lead to a insustainable human and uh, machine relationship. Because, uh, you know, if you don't practice and you don't work for a certain period of time, you may lose your skill and your brain may stop becoming innovative and curious. So that's actually a dimension. Uh, I don't know, you know, it uh, really relates to uh, the technology itself or the culture and the policy that we should look into and that also the ethic issue that we should look into uh, relating to AI. And also don't forget that training every one of these larger models require data. There is also a data sustainability issue. In the past, we often say that the model and the infrastructure and the hardware are lagging behind data. But now uh, I'm actually uh, even uh, you know, uh, augmenting or maybe revising my own uh, conclusion. I found that the models are perhaps outpacing the data. And I still see an opportunity or maybe even a, a danger that uh, uh, some years in the future, our universe uh, may be filled with uh, uh, artificially produce the data. And then, you know, imagine this data go back to the model and you start kind of a closed loop of a model consuming its own product. And that also makes the AI, you know, productivity and innovation becoming unsustainable. So I want to just leave a few questions to here and uh, hopefully elicit uh, some, uh, provoke some uh, great thoughts, you know, from our experts in here to see how can we together uh, work on these challenges. Thank you.